Welcome back into the channel. Today we're going to be starting a new segment which includes core data and iOS development. We'll be learning a little bit about the local database and how to create, edit, manage objects that can be stored offline and in applications without having to worry about an online database. In this first part, we'll create a file here to hold all our core data, which will be a core data manager. And then from there, we are going to create a couple objects and learn how to add objects inside a user interface in the application. This segment will probably be a few videos, all which will contain different information. The first one will start off with creating objects and learning how to contain the functions and easily grab data. The next video will probably learn about editing and deleting objects. And then from there, we'll learn a little bit about configurations, requests, and we might even jump into CloudKit so that you can learn how to configure core data with CloudKit. So getting started, I do have the repo in the description below. I will have the starter repo as well as the complete repo for this video. I have created an iOS application here that is very small. It just has a couple, it has two views, a home view and an ad view. Right now we have some dummy cells. And then if you click this plus button, we have a new user. We'll be learning how to create users with different parameters in them, such as a name variable here and a headline variable. And then when we create that object, it'll be able to show up in our home page. Once we close that application and go back in, that object that we had created will still be here because it is stored locally in the device. So let's get started right away. So I've set up an MVC over here on the left, sort of for simplicity, and this will be a code only tutorial. I'm not going to be doing any more storyboards most likely from here on out. I might do a couple videos, have not decided though quite yet. But what we'll do is I, you should be in the app delegate, and if we scroll down, I've already created the core data stack and the core data stating support, which was automatically created once I created this application. What we're going to do here is we're going to open up our core data manager. This is just a nice, easy way of handling our core data rather than having to constantly go into our app delegate and calling our functions from there. We'll have a nice manager to do that. So what we'll do, we'll go here and we are just going to take these two objects here. We're going to take this object persistent container and this save context. And you can just command X that and boom. Now our app delegate looks nice and clean. And then we're going to head on over to our core data manager. And before we paste what we just copied into this file, we are going to want to import the core data, core data. And we want to change up this class a bit so that it can hold. So that it is part of an NS object. Nice. And then we can just paste that right in and everything looks nice and smooth. And then from here, I'm going to add a way to access these functions more clearly. We'll create shared, and this will just be our core data manager. All right, so we are all set with creating our core data manager file. We do have one more function that we'll add in later. It'll be our function that fetches our data, but we'll jump into that once we actually do something with our new user view controller. From here, we want to head on over to our new user VC. And right here, right below the done button, I've already set up everything up except for our core data. We can remove that comment. And what we want to do is we need to create a new object. So what we'll do is we'll create, well, first. And so next, what we're going to do is we're going to jump into entities. Entities allow us to create objects such as a user, a post, something along like that, and have different types of data inside of it. If we head on over to our data model, you can see that we do have an empty data model here and we have no entities. What we want to do is we can just click add entity and we have an object up here. You can click tab and we'll name this our user. So this will allow us to create user objects and then create and fetch them and edit and delete. All right, so the next one we want to do is we want to add some attributes or values slash parameters to the this user object. What we'll do is we're going to add two attributes here. We'll add a name attribute with a type of string and then a headline attribute with a type of string as well. In the videos coming up, we will most likely add a couple more attributes with different types, such as a date, Boolean, even a double. And we might even look into a user unique identifier and transformables, which allow us to customize the type. So now we've created our object. We are all ready to go with our entity. What we need to do next is actually create 
that object and store it inside of an array when the application is alive. I'm going to head on back over to our home VC. I'm going to create a global variable here and we'll call this our var users. So this is going to contain our user entity here. And we might not want to call it user because we might have a struct that is also a user, but it's all right. We'll, we'll leave it like that for now. And what I will do is I will build so that our application realizes that this is an object so we can actually comment that out and one thing before we do build i did get an error here if we head back on over to our scene delegate here right in our misc we do have the scene did enter background we do want to just delete that since we can either delete it or you can simply call our core data manager dot shared dot save context so we'll just update it like that head back on over and build this project. Succeeded, very nice. And then we'll just create our, comment out our object and it is built. So here very quickly, I am going to edit this entity name. I'm gonna call it user list. That way if we ever had any structs or anything like that, it wouldn't mess around with it. So boom, boom, user list and then quickly build. And our user is ready to go. You might have an error right now, but that's all right. It'll go away in a little bit. So now what we want to do is we need to actually create these users. What we'll do here is once the done button is pressed, I'm not going to check for any empty fields right now. We might add that in later, but right now we are just going to grab the two text fields and we're going to get that data and then create an object with it. All right. So first what we're going to do is we're going to create a context here. So we'll let context equal our core data manager dot shared dot our persistent container, which is just the container holding our data model, which we have it connected to our network dot XC data model ID. And then we also want to call it the view context. So our context allows us to access that container and update, remove, add, and fetch data. Then we're gonna create a new item equals our user list, and we'll call it context, and we're passing that context. Very nice. Now you might get an error here. If we just quickly build, this should clear up. Yes, it did, very nice. Next, what we want to do is we need to new item and dot name, new item dot headline. All right, so we're gonna ignore this error right now. Since we haven't actually grabbed the information from our text fields here in the cells, we are just going to quickly add our users dot append new item. Now, this will add this item to our array, but this will not save the item inside our context and inside our data model, which if we close the app, our object will not be able to load back in because we didn't actually save it. What we're gonna do here, is we're gonna call our core data manager dot shared, and then we're just gonna save that context. So we're just simply saving this object into our persistent container and we're all set. So once we create that object, it is added into our list and we are actually saving the object inside our persistent container, which is inside our data model. And we are saving that object inside our data model. Now what we want to do is we need to actually grab the items from our list. So we're gonna create a var name and then a var headline. And so from here, we're going to do a very sloppy way of gating our data. We're going to grab our index path of the first row. So if let cell equal as our text field cell, let name equals cell dot name field dot text. And then we're just going to update our name with that name. All right. Uh, we'll just call this our name field. I don't want to deal with anything right now. Our name equals our name field. And we're going to do the exact same thing except with the other row. We're just going to up one by one. Perfect. And then this is going to be our headline field. Boom. All right. And then we can also update this. And there it is. All right. And then we can also move those objects in. And our strings good to go our, we just grabbed our data from both cells our name and our headline and then we added those into the objects and then we appended and save the context 
So now it is all good to go. Everything works except if we create an object, close out the app, and then fetch, and then try to open the app, our data will not show because we aren't fetching the data anyway. Now, if we quickly build and run this, I will show you what I mean. Uh, first, first, we do need to remove that dummy data. So I am going to go back into our home VC and users.count. And then right here, I'm gonna go users, indexpath.row dot name and then users index path dot row dot headline all right so now if we load it in we should have an empty screen nice so we don't have any data yet now let's quickly add something in let's say we'll go Johnny and then his headline is software developer something like that I don't know and then done so we did not refresh our table view. What we'll do right here is we're going to do table view dot reload data. Now I did create an object there, but it won't show up because we're not fetching anything. So if we create another user, Mark, and we'll say designer. Boom. So we have Mark as designer because it is in the array right now. The only problem is that we aren't fetching the data, so we can't see Johnny. So let's quickly do that, shall we? What we're going to do is we're going to head on back over to our core data manager and we're going to create a function that allows us to find all for entity. What we're going to do is we're going to add a entity name here, which is going to be a string. And then when we return it, it's going to be in any object. Nice. All right. So first what we want to do is we need to create a request to our core data model. And so what we'll do is we'll let request equals NSF fetch request. And then this will just be where an object result is. And then from here, we need the entity name, which is just our entity name right there. Very nice. And you can do a sort where you can grab the objects and sort them based on a date, or you can sort them by letter, you can sort them by numbers, and so on and so forth. We're not going to do that. We're just going to sort them like this. Probably in the next video, we will create a date created object so that when we create the date, when we create a user, we'll have a date and then we can sort them based on date created. Then we need to get our result, which will just be any object, make that optional. And then what we want to do is we need to do a do catch let error as ns error. And then from right here, we just need to update our result. So we're going to try versus container dot view context dot fetch and then our request. And then if we do get an error, we'll just print that to the console. And right here, we'll just make our result equal nil. And then from there, we're just going to return our result. So boom, just like that, and we are all good to go. Oh, one more thing, let's make our result, let's make our return value as well optional, so just, just in case of anything. And then when we go to our home page in our view, let's set up a load data function. And we'll just call it right here, right, func load data. And what we want to do is we'll let our shared equals core data shared and then share dot find all for entity oh. find all for entity and right here is what we need our core data entity name which is just that user list you can copy it put it in and right here so we'll update our users equals shared as a user list just like that. Oh, and don't forget to put this in um, as a string and we should be ready, all good to go. Now it does find all items for entity and we should be able to run this. Oh, spelled load wrong, it's embarrassing. All right, and now we should be able to run this and it should be able to grab both of our objects that we have created and it does. Just like that, we have John, Johnny and Mark created and we've just created our first core data 
entity. We've created a file. We've been able to create an object from our new user view controller. And then we were able to fetch the data all just like that. And it only took like what, 10, 15 minutes. And then we'll create another user, Adam, and we'll say he's a product specialist or something. And just like that. And then if we just go back and run again, we'll have our three objects created. In the next part, we're going to learn about editing and removing our data as well as sorting based on a, a variable such as a date created. And then from there on, we might we'll jump into more parts of what core data is and how you can use it in the parts after. And the finished repo will be in the description below in case you got stuck somewhere. I am happy to help with anything you might need. Uh, just let me know. Contact me. Uh, all my socials are below. You can even hit me up in the comments. I'll be glad to help. And don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next part.